My name is Sean Campbell. I've been in the farming ranching business for over 50 years and uh, I just love it. Can't find anything better. I'm Ron Lee Campbell. We live in the Pinoca area, uh, just west of Pinoca actually, but in the oil and gas industry it's called Ferry Bank. My, uh, my dad had a farm down in southern Alberta for, that he started in 1919 and when we sold that down there in 1997 we bought here. We found this place strictly by accident. We turned the corner and came, stopped in front of the house here on the road and I looked up the hill and the cattle coming down for water and I just fell in love all over again. We had been searching for 10 years. It was a move, a love of passion. This particular place then has meant so much to us because of that search to find what we wanted that um, to deal with issues now I guess we're we want to defend it we want to have it uh, the way we first saw it and it it's been a huge task to try and get that um, that same beauty back here as when we first saw it it was the first one drilled in our land that that new company that Ron was talking about in 2004 and 5 came in, or 3. This was the first one they did and it actually ended up moved to arbitration. In 2005, uh, we discovered that our water had gas in it. It was investigated and found that the gas that was present in our water from our water well was deep thermogenic gases. That word thermogenic was foreign to us when we first learned about it. It means that the gas can be identified as coming from a formation deep down, basically only in the areas that the oil and gas industry operates. It's been under investigation since 2005. To begin with, there were several tests, uh, water tests done by oil companies, uh, the government. Now we're down to at least one test per year by the Energy and Utilities Board. And that's always interesting because um, Energy and Utilities Board, again, is there for the oil and gas industry, but they're the ones testing our water. Um, our, our response to that has been, if it wasn't the oil and gas industry at fault, why would they be involved? It's just become too plain in this province that the ERCB, the energy regulator, is there to protect the oil and gas companies. We actually have that in writing in a letter um, that they are not there to protect us, they are there to protect the oil and gas companies. Years ago, naively, we thought all we have to do is call up the companies and say we've got a problem here and they would address it. We, we had a very good working relationship with them. So we thought. And the minute we actually brought up the issue, they were very fast, sent out some, sent out some people to test, but the minute it was discovered that likely there was a link to their activities in this area causing problems with our water and the contamination, then the relationship started to fall apart really fast. To, um, to give you an idea how fast it fell apart, we went to this oil company's head office in Calgary, talked to the president of the company. We were sitting across the desk from one another, and we, we had been invited there. We had been there. They said we could times. come anytime. We were always welcome. So we went there with this problem, and we sat across from them, just like we are here, and he listened to our. Or, or talk or listen to what we had to say. And then all of a sudden he got up and he drove his fist into the table and said, that's enough of this, we won't talk about it anymore. At one time, I laugh, um, my job on the farm was totally side by side with Sean. We ran equipment side by side, we worked cattle side by side, that's the kind of relationship we have. But all of a sudden I found that besides that, I had to find 
a half a life <laughs> to devote to learning the oil and gas industry, to writing letters, to preparing presentations, to um, taking pictures, all of that to document this other life that we've now kind of been forced to live. We certainly weren't looking for any more problems, but they seem to have found us. Um, the last couple of years we have uh, problems with water appearing where it's never been before, problems with huge ice flows forming in the winter time where uh, there were none in the past. We've lived here for 16 years. That group of trees just kind of started dying off with no reason. Young ones, old ones, they're all going. Nice to hear them hawks. The sun never shines. Black on my heart from these coal mining blues. This seems to be the newest technology they have for testing of uh, gas vent leaks on the, on the uh, wellheads. And we've noticed over the years that they changed the, the gloves that they've used, but this one now is a, a bright green, which is the better quality for chemical and um, corrosion resistance, whereas sometimes the gloves have been pink or blue or white, and uh, the, your regular household rubber glove doesn't last very long on these, I would guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I, the company, I got no problem with what they do. It's how they go about doing it, in, you know, in a sneaky fashion. They, uh, they tell you one thing and totally do something different. Uh, when you sign a lease, it's like renting this property to someone else. And if you compare it to renting a house, you have an, you have an agreement. They can um, live there in quiet enjoyment. Uh, you're to let them have use of that land. But if something happens in a house, if your renter decides to throw a big party and trashes it, you as a landlord have some avenues to address that issue. Number one, you've got the right to kick them out. We can't kick oil and gas companies off our land no matter what they do to it. You have uh, a damage deposit that you can call in from a renter if he's damaged that property, you, it's your right as a landlord to use that damage deposit. We have no damage deposit with oil and gas companies. We have no recourse if that damage is beyond what we get per year for rent. And that's supposed to be rent. That's not damages. It's a huge job when you've discovered problems that likely ca were caused by their activities uh, because you have to do all the legwork and you have no help. And of course we all know what's happened just recently. Alberta Environment has been moved into a policy only position. The actual doing and action of looking after the environment is now in the hands of the Energy Utility Board. If industry had um, told landowners told Alberta public what their plan was for the whole province. I wonder how we would have reacted. We had an industry person share with us that he felt that the damage that's been caused to our land was caused by fracking years ago. So to now know that this new high pressure fracking with more chemicals, horizontal drills happening right across the fence line. I think the whole idea is insane. I don't think it should be happening. 
I don't think there's enough value in that gas to ever repay the damage that it's going to do to the land and the water and the other resources that we need to live on in this province. It will be a sad day when oil and gas has depleted and we have to change our ways. But when water is gone, all life stops. What I like about this idea of farming and ranching is that I have that freedom to go out and check my cows, to go out and, and uh, check the fields, check the crops. Uh, home, home on the range with buffalo roam and the antelope play. That's, uh, that's what I like about it. I have the ability to say yes or no to things. As a landowner, you don't have the right to refuse. Uh, an oil and gas company comes to you and offers you a lease. Uh, you can tell them you're not happy with it. You can um, perhaps discuss a little bit about where you would like the drilling to happen. But the end result is they have the right to come in. You lose your freedom. You lose your privacy in, in, with oil and gas on your land. My hill, oh, my hill, it gives me the sense of being right with God. I mean, not right with God, but right with Him. Um, I see what He sees. If, if you can imagine being up above the whole world and, and looking down on it, I can see the whole valley off to the east of it, and from one end to the other. It's just the most awesome thing that I've ever seen. Home, home on the range Where the deer and the antelope play As you can see, Ron is the reason that we're in this together because she has a way of words that I don't... I, I, can, I can get things across but it's usually the blunt way and that doesn't really fit too good with a lot of people. So. I take all my frustrations out on her and then she puts it into the right words. So that's, that's I think that's why we get along and why we've gotten along for 40 some years, 43 years exactly. It's definitely not something that you easily do alone. Um, and that's part of the, the difficulty when you talk about um, rural living and community. Uh, once you speak out, like we've been doing, you're kind of ostracized from your community and you have to work really hard to still be accepted because um, you would think that, you know, you're trying to do something good, you're trying to protect people. We've got a huge industry controlling what the rest of Alberta thinks and I don't I don't believe for one minute that all Albertans believe that oil and gas is the only way to live in this province. Alberta was started with a plow and horseback and cattle. It wasn't started with oil and gas. And the skies are not cloudy all day. Oh, give